What's up guys? Welcome back to Bible Film with Dylan. Today we're in Exodus chapter 5. Let's get started. Okay, so today Exodus 5 is a little bit frustrating. Moses has finally decided to obey God. He's given him lots of excuses. Um, but when he does, not only does it not get the results of Pharaoh letting God's people go, it seems to make matters worse in this chapter. God tells Moses and Aaron to tell Pharaoh to let my people go so that they can hold a feast for God in the wilderness. Pharaoh responds asking, who is this Lord? Because Pharaoh did not worship him. Remember the Egyptians had all these gods of the sun and of the water and all kinds of stuff. Um, and so Pharaoh says, no way. And he asks, why, why, does he, why do Moses and Aaron want to take the Israelites away from their work? And um, that's all Pharaoh seems to think about. Like, but they have a job to do. That's all. They're, they're only valuable for this one thing. And then Pharaoh decides to be harsher on them by not providing the straw that they needed to make the bricks. So as they were brick makers, they would, you know, gather the mud and the dirt and stuff, and it, they would pack it together to make bricks, but they needed something um, to put in that mud to keep the bricks to stay, so they would stay together. Papyrus. And that was like straw, papyrus. And Pharaoh said, you know what? If they have all this time to think about how they can talk to me about letting them go, they must not be working hard enough. So we're going to give them some more work. And Pharaoh said, no longer are we going to provide the straw that they need to make these bricks. They can gather their own straw since they have all this time on their hands. And not only that, they're still going to have to make as many bricks as they were expected to make before, um, even though they're doing more work. And so because of this, all of the Israelites get super mad at Aaron and Moses because this isn't helping things in their eyes. It seems like they're making things worse. And so we end this chapter with Moses crying out to God and asking God, why is this happening? And as I read this chapter, I think of my own life. I found that I put a lot of expectations on God based upon what my earthly mind, my fleshly mind thinks is right. A lot of times we think that if we do something for God, that he kind of owes us something. In this situation, God called Moses to do something and Moses does it. So of course, Moses expects to get great results. He's been struggling with obedience, and so when he finally chooses to obey God, he thinks, oh, this is going to fix it. I can check it off the list. I'm obedient. Hooray. And when things don't look the way he thinks that they should, Moses is shocked. Moses may even be thinking, okay, I did what you said, so now you need to deliver. Our dog has a squeaky toy, and it's our least favorite it's one. It's crazy. So I'm sorry. I hope it's not loud. Um, so maybe Moses is thinking, I did this for you. Now you do this for me, God. And he may even be embarrassed about making a big to-do in front of the Israelites. He had to introduce himself to the Israelites and tell them what God was going to do. And then he goes and works on their behalf, and that's not what's happening yet. Um, and then Moses is also probably realizing that this is not the only time that he's going to have to go before Pharaoh. Maybe he's realizing now, uh, this is not going to be a one-step process, a quick, a quick process. Um, and he maybe wanted this check marks in his, check mark in his obedience box so that everything would be better and they could all be happy and they could celebrate and everyone would be so thankful for Moses. And he would be done and good to go. But this is not how God works. He doesn't work through the currency that we have on earth. The thing that we think we should exchange in order to get different things. God works according to his own plans and his own purposes. So for my takeaway from this chapter, there actually can be tons of lessons that we learn through this unsatisfying chapter God doesn't always do things in the way that we expect him or we want him to. Um, I have to keep this verse in mind frequently because this is life. Um, Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God doesn't think like we do. He's not limited to the brain capacity that all of us have. His plans are different. There's a whole reason 
There are a lot of reasons that his world is called the upside down kingdom. It's not like this earth. And so, of course, he doesn't think like us. And from what I have learned about God, I know that he does not waste anything. That dog. Uh, many times when I see God at work for a certain purpose, I have learned that not only does he work on that purpose, but he also touches all the hearts and lives that are involved in the whole process. Moses is frustrated here because he's thinking about the end result and he wants Pharaoh to let the Israelites go and that's not what happens immediately. But what Moses doesn't see yet is that God is also doing a work in Pharaoh's life, in the lives of the Israelites, in the lives of the Egyptians, and most of all, God is doing a work in the heart of Moses' life. We're going to see evidence of that as we continue to read um, and we are going to jump from Exodus chapter 5 to Exodus chapter 14. So, actually, we're going to see a huge difference. We're going to skip the plagues part. If you have time to read about the plagues, it's super interesting. And something I have learned is each plague speaks against one of Egyptian, one of the Egyptian gods. It's one of my favorite parts. It's amazing. It's so good. So, don't skip it. Um, but I do love going from chapter 5 to chapter 14, the one we're going to recap tomorrow. Um, because there's such a stark difference in the life of Moses. And we see that. We see that God is doing a work in Moses' heart. As we watch Moses walk with God and be used by God, we see Moses' faith is going to grow and his trust in God is going to grow. So what I can learn from this is that when God calls me to do something in obedience to him, it may not look the way I think. It may not happen the way that I think it should happen. But I do know I can trust God and I do know that God is always at work for his purposes and for his plans. But also, he's at work in me and in my, in my own heart that whole time. I once heard a great reminder that when obeying God's calling, don't get so focused on the outcome or the end result that you missed God all through the process. The process is the point. God is at work through all of it. And um, if we aren't careful, we'll miss what he's doing. So today's challenge, praise God that we can trust in him. He's the best. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.